And welcome back to another episode of the Bench Warmers. We're here to talk round 13 in the Brussels Brad. Uh, joined by yourself, as always. Looking forward to get stuck into another show. You're right, Chuck. We are joined by myself, <laughs> as we are you. Massive week in footy. The ladder's really starting to take some shape, yes. as we know, and uh, making it tough for some, some teams to earn that top. Uh, double spot as well, but we'll get into that in a sec. But a muddy affair on the weekend, wasn't it? It was. It doesn't matter where you played across no. South Australia, the grass was turned over. And yeah. we spoke about it a few weeks ago. Thank the Lord to be one of those teams that played an away game, and oh. people would have been feeling it away again. Uh, I think there's some teams in here that have copped uh, both those wet games and yeah. their oval won't be liking it and the boys might be on the basketball courts this week. Yes, and a few white shorts thrown in the bin, I imagine, Chucky as the away team. And, and Williamstown get, did get a run in the uh, the farewell tour as well, so, <laughs> so that, that would have held up just nice. One for the memory bank uh, for the Williamstown supporters as well. Uh, let's have a quick break. We've got to thank our major sponsor, the Exchange Hotel, who helps this show go to air each and every week, along with all of our sponsors, who we're going to thank you. As we said, thank you to all our sponsors that help the show go to air each and every week. We're going to get into the feel-good fill-up now. Thanks to Rejuvenate Sports and Remedial Therapy. Brad, take it away. Thanks for having me, Matt. And for the first time this year, the honourable mention is back. I couldn't to split it today. Uh, so bear with me, everyone at home. This could be a long one, but I had it all ready to go. And then overnight, we had some massive news, so I had to throw it on there, and I couldn't couldn't get rid of either of them. First one goes to Anne Hidalgo, the mayor of Paris, Chook. She went for a swim uh, overnight uh, in the Seine River. Now, the yes. Seine River, uh, for the last 100 years, due to health risks around high levels of E. coli, an indication of faecal matter, it has been closed for swimming. You could potentially put boats and whatnot on it, but not swimming you could not go for a dip in there as you can imagine you wouldn't want to either even if you were allowed to but she did no need for cutting of the ribbon chook she has announced the opening of the river for swimming by going for a dip herself just 10 days before the olympics and the triathlon and the swimming marathon uh, will be uh, next week uh, in paris straight down the seine river they've got rid of the fecal matter and they're ready to go had so how does this river a river how do they get rid of the faecal matter? Uh, technology, Chuck. They've been working on this for, for years and they've left their run late, but with 10 days to go, they've done it. I don't know what, there's some sort of clean-up process and it has cost a couple billion bucks and there's a bit of debate around that, yeah. Chucky. So, uh, as you can imagine, when you pump money into oh. things, there's always people on the other side of it mm. arguing about where the money should be going. Mm. Yes, so... Like pumping faecal matter into the river. Yes, and I don't know where it's going as well, because <laughs> if you take something out, it's got to go somewhere, so good luck wherever that's landed. Could be a few toilets blocking up in Paris. Yes, that's right, that's right. Well done, Anne, for going for a great dip, job, and, and I look right. forward to tuning in. I hope the, the water's looking great. And Chucky, overnight, I could yes. not have my segment without mentioning my boy Oscar Piastri. Mm. For those that don't know, he's a 23-year-old young lad from Melbourne. He won his first Grand Prix on the weekend in Hungary. Overnight, we just got the, the beautiful news come through. I got up and watched the whole race at 4.30 this morning. Mr. Reliable, they've been labelling him, Chook, the only driver to complete every lap this season out of all the drivers on the grid. And he's been threatening to do this for a long time, Mr. Reliable, Oscar. He, he's got a long career ahead, and but a big shout-out also goes to his mum, Nicole Piastri Chook. She was cheering on from home in yes. Melbourne. She couldn't make it over. She's very active on Twitter, or X as they call it these days. Even so active that she announced that her 6am Pilates class had been scrapped from her schedule. She opened up the schedule to celebrate with a few champagnes and, and she announced to the Twitter sphere that she wasn't going to be attending Pilates. So well done, Nicole, and well done, Oscar, on bringing joy to Nicole and millions of Australians, Chook, because I, I, I had a bloody good day today. But, Nicole, I hope she pays a late cancellation fee because you can't be doing that to small businesses. No, you need to be, yes, yes, you need to be on the right. And I'm not sure why cancelling your Pilates on Monday morning needed to be put on Twitter. Just yep. congratulate yourself. Got plenty of job, views and plenty of likes. It, so uh, it is a talking point. Yes. But uh, well done to Oscar and... You love your papaya, you love your yes. McLaren, and there's nothing better than seeing an Aussie do well. No. And Danny Rick's been lean for a number of years, yep. so you'll be able to put the uh, Oscar Piastri yes. photo yep. on the wall. Bit more artwork in the physio room, yes, Chucky. Yes, well done, Brad. Another good fill up, and looking forward to, we'll have some good ones with the Olympics over the next couple of weeks as well. As we said, thanks to our sponsors.
Let's get into the round 13 action in the Barossa and game one, Brabbers, Barossa District. 16-11-107, defeating Gawler Central, 11-6-72. Big win to the uh, Dogs in the end, but close game until three-quarter time. That's right, Chucky. Once again, Gawler Central have matched it with uh, with their counterparts to half time. So it was five five to five three Barossa's way at half time, which is which is incredible. Gawler Central keep uh, fighting hard. They get there, but then they just seem to to tail off. As we said, the Williamstown uh, farewell tour, uh, backing in that Lindock hopefully takes over things next year, but. What surprised me there, nice and high scoring as well. That would have been an absolute bog hole out there. Yeah, or well, they've been lucky. I don't know, maybe no rain in Williamstown. Yeah. Who knows? But, yeah, uh, it won't was, hold me breath. It was high scoring uh, for these two sides as well. And unfortunately for Gawler Central, it was Will, uh, it was Williston, I should say, Barossa District, I uh, should say, kicking seven goals four in the last quarter to really turn the Jets on. That's massive uh, from them. They uh, they got a point to prove, Barossa. They want to take some momentum into next year, obviously. But we should... Uh, cover off the best players there. Jack Carpenter, best on ground and oh, four boy. goals. He is a star. doesn't matter what sort of weather he plays in. He's just strong, tough and silky. Uh, for Gawler Centrals, it was Friend and then Saunders for four goals himself. Yeah, great to see uh, Dean Saunders. He's an under-17. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's going to be a super talent. Uh, also works at Drake's in uh, Gawler East yeah. as well. He's good at, do, good at his job. Uh, and good at kicking goals, so well done, Dino. And the other one I liked from Barossa was Willie O'Brien kicked three. He's been yep. playing for Port Adelaide as a top-up um, in the Sandful. Goes back to his local club. He's an absolute talent. He won Sandy Creek, the grand final, hit 100 in that in the cricket as well. He's a superstar. Good to see there. Let's have a look at game two. Williston, eight goals, six fifty-four defeating uh, Murray, five eight thirty-eight. This is one, this is a scout that Donny Brooks needed. A big scout, Chook, and big implications on the leaderboard in on the ladder uh, I should say that we'll get to in a sec but for Williston it was uh, best on ground was Justin Hoskin best on ground and two goals yes. with Waldhuda also two they're just two lads that come finals you know they'll be in amongst it kicking the goals and uh, getting the ball going their way uh, for Newry it was Nichols best on ground and James Bentley two goals what this does though took massive implication on the ladder that leaves Newry on eight wins a win behind the top three teams, and they also give up a game to Tanunda and South, uh, who haven't had the buy. So what it does do is a few games to play out, but it makes it tough to finish top two now. It does, and it, it, oh, it's very, very interesting. I'm excited to see how this shapes up, as we have been all year. So well done to the Donny Rooks, well done to Hurst. Good to see on Hurst. Good to see Ethan Hersey in the best players in the twos as well. So. Yep. Well under ETH, he might have got his kicking boots on. He'd been kicking poorly early in the year when I ran into him. So he watches the show every week. So well done, uh, ETH, as well. Let's have a look at the next game. Anguston 11 14 80, defeating Kapunda 0 0.2. Two points for the game, Brad. That's right. Not a goal kicked. Not a goal kicked. A, a tough day for Kapunda. Best on ground for them so. was McKenzie. And for Anguston, best on ground was Corcoran with Durden four goals. And Durden has cashed in. That now puts him top of the leaderboard for the goal kicking. He's just overtaken uh, Nick Lehman, who, as we know, is out, unfortunately, for the year. So he's just overtaken him. He now sits on 40 goals and three ahead of where Lehman was. And he's five ahead of the next player that uh, is going to be finishing the season. So he's got, uh, got his eyes on the prize there, Jed. Uh, for Kapunda, Riley Never, he's a, he's a solid contributor at both ends of the ground. He's second best for them. And uh, I, I know he just would have been fighting out his, his heart all day. But for me, Anguston, this shows they had a point to prove. They know they needed the win. They know they needed percentage. And it's going to come down to everything. Because it's easy to get that far up. And uh, you'd forgive them to give up two or three goals. But they didn't. They had a point to prove. Well, they did. And you've done well to pick out Riley Nevitt. Because I would have said Kapunda were deplorable. So uh, 25 scoring shots to two on wet day. Uh, it's got me scratching the head about what Kapunda's strategy was. So you can be poor, which we understand where they fit on this ladder. But that's just, oh, I'm not sure that's acceptable. But uh, Benny Anthony with three goals for Anguston yeah. as well, which is good to see. So well done to the Panthers, and we're big fans of what the Panthers yeah. are doing on this show, Brad. Let's have a look at the last game, and it was Freeling defeated by South Gawler. Freeling 3-5-23, South Gawler 6-10-46. This was a belter, and South, again, like the first game, South only got away in the fourth quarter. 
Yeah, Chucky, and a tough one to report on for us with no best players and goal kickers in from South. I'm sh sure they'll work on that during the week. They're usually first in uh, getting them in, so so they'll tidy up from the back end. Sort it out, Chucky. Uh, for Freeling, we know it was Koshell, best on ground, and Cochrane with two goals. One thing I did know from the team list, though, Chuck, Flynn Pisani is back in the country and back mm. in the blue and white, and he yep. is going to fire up for the last five rounds. He's a superstar. He did, and by all reports, Chris James was the best player on the ground for South Gore, so nothing official, but Boyle reports, yeah. and you could just see Jamesy sort of day. The the ovals were no good, they yeah. were terrible, mm -hmm. um, and you know Freeling does get very muddy at the best of times, let alone the weather. Uh, but it's sort of day that Chris laps up because everyone yeah. gets back to his pace. That's so. right, and same with Pat White. I'm sure he enjoyed <laughs> the weather as well. He would have, and uh, well done to them. But Brad, we talked about this game and said you know it was three lead changes. Freeling were up at uh, off, it was zero. Zero goals three to zero goals five in the at quarter time. South goals away, so riveting footy uh, yep. in the wet. Uh, Freely went three points up at three at half time. South Gawler went four points up at three quarter time, and then South Gawler kicks three goals two in the fourth quarter, uh, which was one point to really extend that Martin uh, margin. So close game. Um, well done by Freeling. We like that. We yep. like to see them in the hunt as well. And they would have thought at three quarter time they might have been able to get a big scalp, which would have made the leaderboard even more inter interesting as well. We're going to have a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a look at round 14. All right, Brad, we've been talking about this ladder. Talk us through it. What's the, uh, what's the diagnostics on it at the moment? The diagnostics, Chucky, I've looked far and wide into this one. It is, uh, it's a tricky one and I, I love it. And I love coming on the show every week to dissect it. We have on nine wins, Chucky, Tied top three spots. Tanunda followed by Williston and South, all tied on nine wins. Should say in that Williston have played 12 games. Tanunda and South have had their bye. No other teams in the top five have had their bye because Newry and Anguston are hot on their tail with eight wins. They're going to make it. They're going to find it tough to finish top two. I'm going to say that now. It's not impossible, but it is. It is tough. There's some quality teams above them, and they're giving them some games. But how good is this? Every every round, we don't get any closer to having an answer. We don't. And this week's round's actually going to have a fair bit to play yeah. on how this ladder. I shifts think next every year. round might until the finals from now. I said next year, but next week I meant. But let's get into the games this week, Brad. Game one, South Gaul are taking on one of those teams competing for fourth spot, Angerson. Yes, Chucky, it is do or die for Angerson here. If they slip this one up, they uh, it's going to be tough. They, they, I think they won't be able to finish top two. We could conclude that, and they'll find it very tough to finish top four. Uh, I think South Gawler, they're starting to put all their, their chess pieces all in the right places. They've got the players back from overseas. They're going to be firing up. Uh, South Gawler, uh, I think, will get it by a few goals. I'm going to go with the Lions at home as well. Kapunda taking on Williston. Uh, one for Williston to cement that spot at the top of the ladder. Yes, and we know how important percentage may be uh, down the track. So the challenge for Williston, uh, oh, that will be my tip, the challenge for them will be to play four quarters and stay ruthless all day. So they'll be looking to have a big win. Uh, Kapunda will be looking to make it difficult for them. And I reckon they might be looking forward to getting off their deck, Williston. I think that's also being chopped up for the first time in a long time that I remember seeing Lovely deck, Williston over like that. So. Uh, Kapunda might be nice and fast for him to play and it could be a 100 point win there. Uh, Nuri taking on Barossa, another game that's so important. Another one, Barossa, they're starting to come into a little bit of form. They're going to be a proud club, uh, obviously, with their eyes on next year now. Uh, but Nuri, I think, too much to play for. They have a lot to play for. And I, I think they'll get it done. But I think Barossa will make them work for it. They've got a bit of class in the midfield. Jack Carpenter, who have a bit to say, down back and up forward. Yeah, you will. But yeah, Neary for me. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and Brad, Gawler Central, Tanunda, Tanunda coming off the bye. Gawler Central pushing teams at the moment, they which are. is good to see. Yeah. Uh, this is another big game. Another big game. Uh, Gawler Central, they're playing for a bit of pride as well. They're, uh, yeah. I think they'll, they've, well, like they've done, stats will show. They'll make them work for it in the first half. But Tanunda, they're fit, they're strong, they're silky. I think it is actually drying up a bit this week in general. I think you touched on that. So no, I, th it's getting a, I think we got some rain at the back end of the weekend. Right, OK. So That's the earlier report. But I think Tanunda are good on any deck anyway. So I think Tanunda uh, will get that one comfortably. And again, if they're up, the challenge for them will be to stay at it because percentage will be massive. I agree. I'm going with the Pies in that one as well. It's going to be a great round 14 in the Brussels, Brad. Looking forward to coming back to the desk, looking 
looking at the ladder, looking at the results and seeing some really good competitive games of footy. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors and everyone that watches the show each and every week. We'll see you next week.